Pro Wrestling History Radio Daily is live. I'm your host, the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, and join me as we look at the professional wrestling birthdays, deaths, title changes, and top moments for this day in professional wrestling history. But before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling nerd on. Ladies and gentlemen, how in the hell are you doing? I hope you have had a wonderful day, relaxing and so forth, before we start off the week. But let's get going on our wrestling history. Another short one, of course. I don't know why these days have been getting shorter and shorter. But it is February 25th, and let's start off as we always do on a positive note. That's right. These are your pro wrestling birthdays. First off, 1926. Billy Darnell. Billy Darnell was a favorite opponent of uh, Buddy Rogers uh, when he was NWA champion. Uh, They would go all across the territories, and that would be one of the matches that Rogers would have in that territory before going against like the local top guy and so forth. Um, But a close friend of Buddy Rogers and a regular at the Cauliflower Alley Club in his later days moving on 1949 speaking of nature boys nature boy rick flair Woo! i'm sorry that was probably really 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 lame 1971 one of the biggest what ifs in more modern professional wrestling uh, sean o'hare is born in 1971, um, that gimmick that he had of, you know, being kind of the devil's advocate and so forth, and it just getting killed by Shawn Michaels and so forth. Just there was such a possibility there. Uh, shame. Moving on, 1982, the first lady of Ring of Honor, Maria Kanellis. Um, for her career from going from the ditzy person in WWF to having the career that she's had as a manager in Japan, ring of honor, AEW, and so forth. Um, TNA is actually quite impressive. She has quite, quite a portfolio of other things she does outside of professional wrestling too. So that is awesome. All right. On the flip side of that coin, your pro wrestling deaths, for February 25th. We just got one. Um, 2016. Mark Pyle. Now Mark was a WWF enhancement talent in the 80s. Trained by Stu Hart. And was the adopted son of Chief J Strongbow. All right. Enough of the sad stuff. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. That's right. These are your pro wrestling title changes and big moments. For February 25th. All right, team. Like I said, another short day in professional wrestling history uh, pre 2000s. So just two entries. So we're going to we're going to look at the full cards here and go over everything at these two events. 1990, the NWA held their Wrestle War pay-per-view in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Greensboro Coliseum. Here are the matches. You tell me which one would have been your favorite out of these. Kevin Sullivan and Buzz Sawyer defeat the Dynamic Dudes, Shane Douglas and Johnny Ace. Norman the Lunatic defeats Cactus Jack. Yeah, that's a crazy one. The Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson defeat the Midnight Express, Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton. When the Midnights went for a flapjack on Morton, only to have Morton tackle Eaton and Gibson roll up lane for the pin. The Road Warriors defeat the Skyscrapers, Mark Kalos, a.k.a. The Undertaker, and Mike Enos, who was wearing a mask, subbing for Dan Spivey. Mike Enos was not that tall, so poor choice for a sub in a tag team called the Skyscrapers, maybe? Uh, The match was a Chicago street fight with the Doomsday device being done on Enos after the match, Doom, uh, Butch Reed and Ron Simmons, uh, and the Warriors brawled at ringside. United States Tag Team Champions Brian Pillman and Tom Zink defeat the Freebirds, 
Jimmy Garvin and Michael Hayes when Pillman hit a flying body press on Garvin for the win. NWA World Tag Team Champions Rick and Scott Steiner defeat Ole and Arn Anderson when Rick pinned Ole with a cradle. Ole at this point was well past his prime. And the main event sees NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair defeat Lex Luger via countout. Luger had Flair in the torture rack, but the Andersons attacked the injured Sting at ringside. Luger went to help Sting and was counted out. Wah, wah, wah. <sighs> Again, I said this yesterday and I said it the day before. Early 90s WCW and the finishes were rough. All right. The other event and other thing we have going on for February 25th is an ECW show. So let's compare the two of them and see which one we like better. 1995, ECW ran a show at the ECW Arena in South Philadelphia that would become known as the Return of the Funker as Terry Funk returned to the promotion after a five-month absence. So the matches for this one. The Pitbulls defeated Chad Austin and Joel Hartgood when Pitbull number two pinned Hartgood with a super power bomb. Joey Styles interviewed Raven and Stevie Richards, leading to a confrontation and a brawl with Tommy Dreamer and typically ECW stuff. Jason Knight and Paul Lurie defeat Mikey Whipwreck and Hack Myers when a masked man entered the ring and knocked out Hack, allowing Lurie to get the pin. Two Cold Scorpio defeated Hector Guerrero with a 450 splash. Yes, Hector Guerrero was in ECW. Axel Rotten defeated Ian Rotten in a barbed wire baseball match. Ugh, the Rotten Boys. They were truly rotten. ECW World Champion Shane Douglas defeated Marty Jannetty. Yes, Party Marty when he turned a Rana attempt into a powerbomb for the pin. Next, we had the public enemy, Rocco Rock, including Rocco Rock, in a wheelchair selling his injuries from a double table show. He came out for an interview, but was attacked by Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. Ooh, crazy. All right, Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko defeat Taz and Sabu to win the ECW World Tag Team titles when Benoit pinned Sabu with a top rope powerbomb. A lot of powerbomb finishes in ECW at that point. All right, and this is the big one to end it all. Um, and this was, I remember this, this is one of, it was weird, but also one of the more famous moments, at least in early ECW history. Woman and the Sandman come out and explain that the Sandman cannot wrestle due to suffering a concussion against Cactus Jack at the previous show. Instead, they have a large box with a mystery opponent, Daisy Drake, who Cactus defeats with a double double arm DDT. Uh, Cactus and the Sandman then start brawling with Cactus knocking the Sandman into the box. Cactus pulls him back out with the curtain from the box covering Sandman's head. Cactus pulls the curtain off to reveal Terry Funk dressed in an identical outfit to the Sandman. Funk and Cactus start going at it with the Sandman joining in. Tommy Dreamer comes out to make the save, but just stares at Funk, his mentor, and gets beat down by the Sandman. Shane Douglas comes in and Woman tries to convince him to join Funk and Sandman. He considers it and appears to agree, but runs off Funk and the Sandman to help Cactus, since Douglas and Cactus had trained together at Dominic DiNucci's school when they first broke into the business. This angle becomes called, via tape traders and so forth, of the day. We called it the Funk in a Box, in one of the most memorable moments in early ECW history. And that's it, folks. Another short day. But we're starting the week. Everybody get some rest. And until next time, take care of yourself and each other.